Number 8. Chesapeake in Ohio, Greenbrier number 614. Up next is locomotive number 614, the sole survivor of 12 Chesapeake in Ohio 484 Greenbriers built by the Lima Locomotive Works in Lima, Ohio between 1935 and 1948. The Chesapeake in Ohio received its first five 484s from Lima in 1935, designated as the J3s and numbered 600 to 604. The C&O also received an additional two J3s in 1942, numbered 605 to 606. The final five C&O 484s built in 1948, classified as the J3As and numbered 610 to 614, were a larger and more modern refinement of the J3s. Interesting fact, while most of the railroads in the U.S. called their 484s Northerns, the Chesapeake in Ohio instead called their 484s Greenbriars after the Greenbrier Hotel in the Allegheny Mountains near White Sulphur Springs in Greenbrier County, West Virginia. The same also went with their 284s. Rather than calling them Berkshires, the C&O called their 284s Kanawas after the Kanawa River. The J3As only saw service on the C&O for about four years, until they were retired in 1952. However, about three years later, two of the Greenbriars, numbers 610 and 614, were temporarily brought back into service due to a power shortage, by that I mean a shortage of motor power, on the C&O. However, during its brief return to service, the 614 was temporarily renumbered to 611. The reason why? During the power shortage, the C&O had borrowed a few 484 Northerns from the Richmond, Fredericksburg, and Potomac Railroad, with one of these numbered 614. So as to avoid confusion, the C&O renumbered their 614 to 611. After about a year of their return to revenue freight service, the two J3As were once again retired from service and placed in storage along with many other withdrawn C&O steam locomotives on the scrap line near the railroad's diesel shops in Russell, Kentucky. The 614 remained in storage until it was eventually saved for preservation nearly 20 years later, in 1975, when it became one of three Chesapeake and Ohio locomotives to be donated to the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Museum in Baltimore, Maryland, where it was cosmetically restored and put on stag display. The two other c and locomotives that were preserved with the 614 were 284 Kanawa No. 2705 and 2662 Malay Compound No. 1309, the latter of these two engines being purchased by the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad back in 2014, then restored back to steam in late 2021. The 614 remained on display at the B&O Museum until 1979, when the museum traded the Greenbrier to Ross Rowland in exchange for former Reading Railroad T1 Northern No. 2101. After that engine received extensive damage from a roundhouse fire in Russell, Kentucky, ending its operating career. The 2101 still resides at the museum to this day, dressed up in its previous identity as American Freedom Train No. 1. When the 614 was restored to operational condition following an 18-month restoration, the Greenbrier picked up with the 2101 left off, starting off with hauling the Chessie Safety Express, a rolling exhibit train that operated throughout the Chessie system to help educate the public on grade crossing safety. Following the success of the Chessie Safety Express, the 614 was kept in storage in Hagerstown, Maryland until 1985, when Ross Rowland had the locomotive rebuilt for an ambitious experiment for his latest project at the time, the A3000 steam locomotive. This ambitious project got its inspiration from Rowland's then-new company, American Coal Enterprise, with the intent of building a new state-of-the-art coal-fired steam locomotive to reduce dependency on foreign oil. For this project, the 614 was renumbered the 614T, with the letter T standing for test engine, and was fitted with scientific equipment to record its performance as it hauled long heavy coal trains between Huntington and Hinton, West Virginia, for several weeks between January and February of 1985. The 614T produced excellent results for the tests in the freezing weather, and its fuel consumption cost proved to be much lower than most modern diesel locomotives operating around that time. However, despite the great amount of data from the 614T's tests, the A3000 project ended up being cancelled when the price of oil dropped and the nation's railroads dropped their support. In 
1992, the 614 once again became part of another ambitious project by Roland, known as the 21st Century Limited. A special exhibition train showcasing the technology and other advances envisioned for the new millennium. For this project, the 614 was decked out in a futuristic way, with blue streamlined shrouding and a centered headlight in the middle of the smoke box door. Sadly, however, just like the A Street Thousand project, this never came to be. Three years later, in 1995, the 614 moved to the New Hope and Ivy Land Railroad in New Hope, Pennsylvania, where it received a complete overhaul. When this was completed, the former C&O Greenbrier operated excursion trains between Hoboken, New Jersey and Port Jervis, New York from 1996 to 1998. During these excursions, the large 484 was allowed to let loose, even running at speeds of up to 80 miles per hour. Following these excursions, the 614 was once again taken out of service and placed in storage at the Reading and Northern Railroad in Port Clinton, Pennsylvania. In the year 2000, Roland had put up the large Greenbrier up for auction at the New Jersey Transit Maintenance Facility. However, nobody was interested in purchasing the former C&O 484. In 2010, there was talk between Roland and Jim Justice, owner of the Greenbrier Resort and governor of West Virginia, of operating steam-powered excursion trains between Greenbrier County, West Virginia and Washington, D.C., known as the Greenbrier Presidential Express. The 614 was even painted up in a new dark green livery to help promote the new excursion service. However, the project for the Greenbrier Presidential Express ended up being cancelled in May 2012 due to a lack of funding as well as problems with capacity on the CSX portion of the proposed excursions route between Greenbrier County and Washington. Because of this, the passenger cars and diesel locomotives for the intended train were auctioned off the 614 was put on stag display in Clifton Forge, Virginia. As of today, the 614 remains on stag display at Clifton Forge, still in its Greenbrier Presidential Express dark green livery. However, there is the possibility that the large 484 Greenbrier could return to steam yet again. One of these possibilities is the latest project by Roland, first announced back in 2015, known as the Yellow Ribbon Express, but has since been renamed to the American Freedom Train 2.0 in 2017, which would involve restoring the 614 yet again as part of a steam-powered extravaganza to honor our nation's military veterans. Part of this project's intent to restore the 614 even involves an ambitious experiment to convert the locomotive from burning coal to burning natural gas. However, there hasn't been any further news about the American Freedom Train 2.0 project since then, so it's currently unknown how it's progressing. But it would be kind of interesting to see how the 614's conversion from coal to natural gas would go. After all, two other steam locomotives, namely Grand Canyon Railway 282 Mikado No. 4960 and, most recently, Florida East Coast 462 Pacific No. 148, were converted to burn recycled vegetable oil of all things, so it will be interesting to see how a steam locomotive does when converted to burn natural gas if this project goes through. Number 7 London Midland and Scottish Railway No. 6229, Duchess of Hamilton Now we're going to England side of the Atlantic, as we now come to engine No. 6229, Duchess of Hamilton, one of three preserved Coronation Class 462 Pacifics designed by Sir William A. Stanier for the London Midland and Scottish Railway. The LMS had a total of 38 Coronation Pacifics built of the railway's main works or crew between 1937 and 1948 and were built for pulling long heavy express passenger trains, most particularly the railway's flagship express train, the Coronation Scott, which was inaugurated around the same time the class was introduced. The Coronations were a more enlarged and improved version of Stanier's previous class of 462 Pacifics, the Princess Royal class, and were recorded to be the most powerful steam locomotives in Great Britain, with a power output of 2,511 horsepower. This class also became known as the Duchesses, as 10 members of the class, numbers 6225 to 6234 to be precise, were named after Duchesses of the UK. Engine number 6229, Duchess of Hamilton, was the 10th member of the class to be built in September 1938 and was the last of a second batch of five streamlined Pacifics built for the LMS. 
These engines were painted Crimson Lake red with gold lining, while the first batch of five Coronation Pacifics, which also includes the prototype engine number 6220, Coronation, were painted Caledonian blue. About one year into the engine's working life in 1939, Duchess of Hamilton was shipped abroad to the United States, along with a specially built Coronation Scott Consist to take part in the 1939 New York World's Fair. For this trip, number 6229 had swapped identities with classmate number 6220, Coronation. Except for one little detail. While the two LMS Streamline Pacifics had swapped their names and cab numbers, they both still kept their original liveries. Therefore, Justice of Hamilton, masquerading as Coronation, remained Crimson Lake, while Coronation, dressed as Duchess of Hamilton, remained Caledonian Blue. Aside from appearing at the New York World's Fair, Duchess of Hamilton made a tour across the United States over the next few years. Of course, during his time in the US, the engine had to be given a few American modifications in order to fit US railroad safety standards, namely being given a set of automatic knuckle couplers, a headlight, and a bell. Duchess of Hamilton would eventually return to the UK in 1942, after the outbreak of the Second World War, in order to help out with the war effort. However, the Coronation Scott train set the engine pulled during its time in the US remained there until 1946, about a year after the end of the war. Two years after the war had ended, number 6229 would have its streamlining removed in 1947 as it got in the way of central maintenance, after which the engine continued in regular express service during the final few months of the LMS, then later for British Railways in 1948 where it was then renumbered 46229. The engine's career on VR was relatively uneventful, other than being repainted to the railway's early Express Passenger Blue livery, then later its conventional Brunswick Green livery, and being given a conventional rounded smoke box to replace the sloping smoke box it and the other former streamlined Coronation Pacifics first had when they were first built, in order to accommodate their streamlining. Duchess of Hamilton was eventually withdrawn from service in February 1964. But fortunately, it was safe from scrap and became one of three preserved Coronation Pacifics, the other two being number 6233, Duchess of Sutherland, which is currently operational, and number 6235, City of Birmingham, which resides on static display inside Think Tank, Birmingham Science Museum in Birmingham. During their earlier years of preservation, the two actual duchesses were purchased by Sir Billy Budlin and were put on stack display as exhibits for the children's playground at one of his holiday camps. They would remain on display there for about 11 years, until they were removed from the camp in 1975 as it was undergoing refurbishment. In 1976, the Friends of the National Railway Museum acquired the Duchess of Hamilton on a 20-year loan from Budlands and immediately began work on restoring the locomotive back to operational condition. After about four years of work, the engine was brought back to steam in 1980 and operated as the NRM's flagship engine until 1985. During that time, number 6229 saw quite a bit of activity, including taking part in the Rocket 150 cavalcade in 1980. After the engine was purchased from Budlands in 1987, it was given an extensive overhaul that took about two years to complete. It was once again returned to steam in 1989 and spent the next seven years seeing plenty of action on mainline rail tours. This also included a bit of a slip-up in November 1994 when its tender derailed out of Temple Mead Station in Bristol. The locomotive was once again taken out of mainline service in 1996 after its seven-year boiler ticket expired. After that, it was then set on stag display inside the Great Hall in the National Railway Museum. Alongside a certain rival locomotive, I'll also get into a bit further down this list. Back in 2005, the NRM had announced that Duchess of Hamilton would be restored with its original streamlined casing. This was done at Tisley Locomotive Works in Birmingham and took about four years to complete. When this was done on May 18, 2009, the re-streamlined Coronation Pacific was returned to the museum and placed in a new exhibit called Duchess of Hamilton Streamlined, Styling and Era, and that's where it remained ever since. There have been rumors a while back that Duchess of Hamilton could steam again. However, at this point, I'm pretty certain that the engine won't be returning to steam anytime soon. Oh well, at least number 6233, Duchess of Sutherland, is still operational. 
Number 6. Norfolk and Western, number 1218. Up next is the sole survivor of the Norfolk and Western Railway's Class A Simple Articulated 2664s, number 1218. The Norfolk and Western had a total of 43 Class A's built at their own Roanoke shops between 1936 and 1950, number 1218 in particular being built in 1943, which were of the unique 2664 wheel arrangement, a type not that common on America's railroads. In fact, the NNW was only one of three railroads to adopt the 2664 wheel arrangement, the other two being the Seaboard Airline and the Pittsburgh and West Virginia, and a total of 60 locomotives of this wheel arrangement were built for all three railroads, the majority of them of course being built for the Norfolk and Western. Like many other NNW articulated locomotives, the Class A spent their working lives hauling long heavy freight and coal trains, and thanks to being fitted with roller bearings, they were able to achieve high higher speeds while pulling these trains. In fact, they were even said to have pulled long heavy passenger trains as well. The Class A's were also pretty powerful as well, despite being a bit shorter and having less build than Union Pacific's 4664 Challengers. However, while the Challengers could generate between 97,300 to 97,350 pounds of tractive effort, the Class A's could generate nearly a whopping 126,000 pounds of tractive effort. If that doesn't show you just how powerful the Class A's were, then I don't know what will. However, just like every other railroad in the US, the Norfolk and Western eventually had to give in to the inevitable transition from steam to diesel power by 1960. The Class A's were retired from regular service between 1958 and 59, and subsequently cut up for scrap. However, not all the Class A's ended up biting the dust. Following its retirement in 1959, number 1218 ended up being spared from the Scrapman's Blowtorch when it was purchased by the Union Carbine Company in Charleston, West Virginia, being used as a stationary boiler at a chemical plant for the next six years, eventually not only becoming the sole surviving NW Class A, but also the sole surviving 2664 articulated steam locomotive in the world. The 1218 was then purchased again in 1965 by New England millionaire and rail fan F. Nelson Blount for a Steamtown USA collection in Bells Falls, Vermont. However, when Blount was killed in a plane crash in 1967, as well as following a bit of an argument with Steamtown regarding ownership of the locomotive, the 1218 was then reacquired by the Norfolk and Western, who then had the locomotive cosmetically restored at the very place where the engine was built, the East End Shops in Roanoke, Virginia. Following the completion of this restoration, the large Class A was then placed on stack display at the Roanoke Transportation Museum, which would later become the Virginia Museum of Transportation, in 1971, originally located in Wasana Park in Roanoke, Virginia. Jump to nearly 15 years later, in late 1984, when Norfolk Southern, which at this point had existed for two years since the merger between the Southern Railway, of the United States and the NW in 1982, needed a larger locomotive for their corporate steam program, which was originally operated by the Southern since 1966. They already had Norfolk and Western Class J Northern No. 611 operating at that time, but it soon became clear that they needed a stronger and more powerful locomotive as the steam program grew more and more popular, so it was then decided to have the 1218 return to steam the Poldy's ever-growing excursions. Some months later, on May 10th, 1985, the large articulated locomotive was towed from the museum to the Norris Yard Steam Shop in Irondale, Alabama to be restored to operational condition. More than a year and a half later, in mid-January 1987, the Class A moved under its own power for the first time in almost 30 years, and after a break-in run in late March more than two months later, the massive 2664 was ready for excursion service. Over the next four years, between 1987 and 1991, the 1218 operated a number of excursions throughout the Norfolk Southern system. 
Of course, some of these excursions also included the ones I mentioned earlier on this list, those being the 1989 triple and double headers with the 611 and the complete 587 for the NRHS convention in Nashville, North Carolina that year, and the 1990 NRHS convention in St. Louis, Missouri, along with Union Pacific 844, Conville 819, and Frisco 1522. Another excursion number 1218 also participated in was on November 3rd, 1991, where it pulled a 28 car triple header with the 618 and Southern Railway 282 Mikado number 4501 between Chattanooga, Tennessee and Atlanta, Georgia for the 25th anniversary of the Norfolk Southern Steam Program. By the end of the 1991 season, after pulling a round trip between Huntsville, Alabama and Chattanooga, the large articulated 2664 was taken back to the shops in Irondale, Alabama for an extensive overhaul, where they planned to have the engine ready for the 1996 operating season. This overhaul would have involved having its boiler fluids replaced as well as repairing a few portions of its firebox. Sadly, however, this next overhaul would never be complete. Following the deaths of William and Robert Clater, the men responsible for bringing the steam program into Norfolk Southern, as well as the 1218's restoration back in 1987, a number of unwanted changes to the steam program occurred during the 1994 season. These included major restrictions placed on steam locomotives involving where and when they could operate, rising insurance costs from $10 million in 1993 to $25 million in 1994, along with another expansion expected increase the following year, and finally, a yard switching accident in Lynchburg, Virginia that resulted in nine passenger cars for the steam program being derailed and damaged, with even two of them being deemed damaged beyond repair and subsequently scrapped. Following all this, the Norfolk Southern Steam Program was sadly closed in December 1994. As a result, in 1996, Ironically, the same year the large locomotive's intended overhaul was to be completed, the 1218 was partially put back together and moved back to the East End shops in Roanoke, where it spent the next five years in storage. In 2001, the 1218 was then donated to the city of Roanoke, and then put on static display at the Virginia Museum of Transportation, where it remains to this very day. For 14 years since returning to the museum, the 1218 had reunited with number 611, which had also been retired in 1994 following the end of the steam program, until the large streamlined northern type was then moved to the North Carolina Transportation Museum in Spencer, North Carolina back in 2014 for restoration, then returned to steam again in 2015 for Norfolk Southern's new steam program, dubbed 21st Century Steam. However, more than likely, the large Class A articulated won't be as lucky. While the engine does look fine on the outside, how it is on the inside is a whole different story. During the engine's reassembly in 1996, many of its components had gone missing, most likely sometime after they had been removed during its intended overhaul after being taken out of service back in 1991. It's pretty unlikely that this large locomotive may ever steam again, as another restoration to bring this massive machine back to steam again would be quite a massive undertaking, taking up a considerable amount of time and money in order to complete, especially for constructing new parts to replace those that have gone missing. But even so, the 1218 still enjoys a nice quiet retirement inside the large train sheds at the Virginia Museum of Transportation, standing as a monument to the men who built her nearly 80 years ago, those who brought this huge engine back to steam back in 1987, as well as the rest of its deceased fellow Class A's. Also, this massive engine takes the term Soul Survivor to a whole other level not only for being the sole surviving Norfolk and Western Class A, but also the sole surviving steam locomotive with a 2664 wheel arrangement in existence. Then again, the articulated engine's retirement wasn't all that quiet. On May 31st, 2015, the 1218 was reunited not only with the 611 following its most recent return to steam at that time, but also with fellow Roanoke built Class Y6A 2882 number 2156, which was on loan from the National Museum of Transportation in St. Louis, Missouri between 2015 and 2020, creating a one-of-a-kind reunion of Roanoke's Big Three. Number 5 
Pennsylvania Railroad number 1361. Wrapping up part 4 of my list at the number 5 spot is one of two survivors of one of the most iconic classes of 462 Pacifics in the United States, the Pennsylvania Railroad Class K-4s. A staggering total of 425 K-4 Pacifics were built between 1914 and 1928, with 350 of them built by the Penzi's own Juniata shops in Altoona, Pennsylvania between said years, and 75 built by Baldwin in 1927. Like many other 462 Pacifics on other railroads, the K-4 spent the majority of their working lives heading many of the Penzi's named express passenger trains, such as the Red Arrow, the Birmingham Special, and, most notably, the railroad's most famous express train, the Broadway Limited. In fact, the K-4's design even served as inspiration for Sir Nigel Gresley's famous LNER Class A1-A3 Pacifics in 1922 including the sole surviving member of the class and one of the world's most famous steam locomotives, number 4472, Flying Scotsman. From the 1930s onwards, as trains became longer and heavier, the K-4s weren't quite powerful enough to handle these trains on their own, so they often ended up double-heading or even triple-heading their trains. While this did work, it was pretty expensive having more than one set of crews operating one single train. There had been a few attempts to try and replace the K-4s over the years, such as the one-off experimental K-5 Pacific and the T-1 duplex 4444s, but none were really successful. Therefore, the K-4s continued their work pulling the vast majority of the PRR's express passenger trains, until their eventual retirement from service between 1947 and 1960. Following the introduction of diesel locomotives, such as the EMD E7s and E8s, to the railroad's passenger roster. Out of the 125 K-4s built, only two managed to make it beyond the days of steam. After nearly 40 years of service on the Penzi, K-4 No. 1361, which was built back on May 18, 1918, was eventually retired in 1956. About one year later, on June 8, 1957, the locomotive was placed on stag display at the famed Horseshoe Curve outside of Altoona, Pennsylvania. The old 462 Pacific spent nearly 30 years on stag display, until September 16, 1985, when the engine was taken out of the park and moved to the Altoona Works to be returned to steam. Its place at the Horseshoe Curve was then taken by former Pennsylvania GP9 diesel locomotive number 7048. After about a year and a half of work, on April 12, 1987, the 1361 was steamed up for the first time in more than 30 years, after which it soon entered excursion service, operating throughout the state of Pennsylvania, hauling its first excursion in October of that year. During its time in excursion service, on December 18, 1987, the Pennsylvania General Assembly had officially designated the PRR Class K-4 Pacific as the state steam locomotive of Pennsylvania. Of course, this not only went to the 1361, but also its other surviving sibling, Pennsylvania K-4 No. 3750, on stag display at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania in Strasburg, Pennsylvania. However, the 1361's new lease on life only lasted for just one year, when in 1988, while pulling another excursion train, the locomotive suffered a catastrophic failure to its main bearing and driving axle. It was immediately taken out of excursion service for a complete rebuild. However, it was then decided to officially retire the 1361 from service altogether. Eight years later, in 1996, the engine was disassembled and moved to Steamtown National Historic Site in Scranton, Pennsylvania, where it was intended to be restored to steam again. Number 1361's restoration was first given an initial grant of $420,000 by the state of Pennsylvania. However, Tom Ridge, governor of Pennsylvania at the time, also granted an additional $600,000 in March 2000. However, as time went on, the project that restored the Penzi K-4 gradually slowed down, because, as quoted, every broken pin and bolt had to be replaced with handmade duplicates. Dates for the restoration's completion kept on getting pushed back further and further. After about 13 years of work, restoration for the locomotive had cost up to $1,700,000. 
Eventually, in April 2010, Steamtown had canceled the project for 1361's restoration. So instead, they decided that, rather than doing a complete restoration to have the engine return to full working order for mainline excursions, they were to restore it for a semi-static display, which would have allowed the K4 to be fired up and produce enough steam pressure to operate smaller trains at slower speeds, such as Steamtown Scranton Limited, and for blowing the locomotive's whistle. However, even this project ended up being cancelled as well, as the old 1918 built boiler needed some pretty serious reconstruction in order to meet mandatory specification requirements set by the Federal Railroad Administration. By 2013, number 1361 had been completely moved from Scranton to the Railroaders Memorial Museum in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Well, not the entire locomotive went there. The engine's tender, frames, and various other components went to Altoona, while its boiler was stored at the Narrow Gates East Broad Top Railroad. In early 2015, the museum had completed its new quarter roundhouse and had all of 1361's components stored there. It wouldn't be until July of that year that the boiler would be moved to Altoona, reunited with the rest of the dismantled engine. There is a chance that this iconic 462 Pacific type could return to the main line. In May 2018, former Norfolk Southern CEO Wick Mormon, who was also former head of the railroad's 21st century steam program, and rail preservationist Bennett Levin, best known for owning and operating two preserved Pennsylvania E8 diesels, started a new project to have the 1361 restored back to operational condition yet again. Along with restoring the engine's frames and tender, as well as fabricating new components to replace the old worn-out ones, this project also involves building a completely new boiler for the K4, designed to fit both mechanical engineering and FRA standards. At this point, the project has managed to raise up to $100,000 for the 1361's new Bell Pair firebox. Plus, work on the locomotive's tender is just about nearly complete as well. Total costs for the locomotive's restoration, from both the second and third attempts, have been estimated to be up to $2.6 million, but hopefully it won't be too much longer until this iconic Pennsylvania Pacific is back in steam once more. Also, just to add as a personal note, by the time they've completed restoring the K4 Pacific back to operation, hopefully they'll consider restoring the engine in its pre-war appearance. Personally, I've always preferred this look for the K4s over their post-war appearance.